Well, welcome back. Um, this one's going to be a uh, quick tutorial on how to tell if our lateral knees are uh, rotated properly. And uh, if they are rotated, which way are they rotated? Uh, is there a tube angle? If so, if there's too much, uh, too little, uh, these are all things that we need to be able to evaluate if we are going to be repeating a lateral knee, which uh, happens a lot in the hospital. Uh, so I have my first image here that looks pretty good. Keep in mind that this is a phantom, and um, my main uh, area of interest is going to be the femoral condyles here. The uh, patella here is it's not a good example of, of rotation versus not rotated, just because typically on a, a a lateral knee on an actual patient, you're going to see a, a joint space between the femur and the patella there, uh, which we don't see here. But right now I'm looking at these femoral condyles. Um, they're they're pretty good. They're they're almost uh, true lateral. Uh, they're you know they're a little bit of uh, uh, there's a little bit of non superimposition here, I guess if that's a word, um, but not bad. I would definitely not repeat this one. Um, so. You know, we, we have a medial uh, medial condyle, lateral condyle. They're supposed to be perfectly superimposed. It's a little bit of gap here. Um, I think I'm just going to go to the next image. It shows a little bit of a difference. Um, and I'm going to zoom in on this a little. And let's look at these condyles real closely here. Now, to me, this looks like uh, uh, they're, they're pretty superimposed up, up front here, like anteriorly. But you go down here, uh, posteriorly they are not superimposed. Uh, so which one's which? Which one's medial? Which one's lateral? I need to know this in order to determine which way I need to rotate to correct. Uh, we know the medial has uh, more OID, so it should be larger, which also means it should have less uh, recorded detail. Now, um, this is just an image on my computer. The resolution is very low, uh, not like a uh, reading station. Uh, for a radiologist, but <clears throat> keep that in mind. You, you know, you can zoom in in the hospital and get a lot more detail with this. But uh, to me, just in size, this the one that's more posterior looks larger, kind of envelops the whole condyle uh, underneath it there. So I'm going to call this one the medial. This is the lateral condyle. Again, this is the left uh, left knee. So if the medial one is more posterior. That means um, I'm not in true lateral. If anything, I'm a little more internally rotated than I need to be. So my toes, if, if I can picture my foot in a true lateral position, my toes may be, uh, you know, have a little more distance from the table than uh, my heel. So in order to fix that, I'm going to turn my, uh, turn my foot externally, which in turn turns the whole leg externally. Um, which will bring this uh, posterior condyle, the, the uh, I guess I shouldn't call it the posterior condyle, it, it is posterior, but it is the medial condyle, should bring it more anteriorly to superimpose the lateral. All right, let's look at another one here. Um, let's zoom in on that one. Ooh, too much. It's getting a little grainy there. All right, so not too bad uh, rotation uh, left to right. I would say that this one here, uh, I don't know, what, what do you think that is? Medial or lateral? I'm following the line here. It looks like it's going up. It's the higher one here. Um, this guy right here is also higher here. To me, uh, the, the lower one here, uh, the one that's more inferior, it seems to be a little larger. I would call that the medial condyle uh, as well. This one was probably done with a perpendicular tube angle, um, and that is why it is displaying the medial condyle inferiorly uh, to the lateral condyle. Uh, so doing a, a little bit of a tube angle, a five degree cephalic tube angle, would be probably enough to project this lower uh, portion right here up just high enough to superimpose it over the lateral condyle. Um, so again, remember that uh, fundamentals, you, whatever's closest to the x-ray tube um, is going to be projected uh, in the direction of the tube angle. That's kind of a uh, 
big concept here. So if I if I angle my tube cephalic, this condyle, the medial condyle, is closer to the tube. So the more cephalic angle I give it, going from we'll say five to ten degrees, the more I'm going to project it in the direction of the tube angle, which is which is cephalic or towards the head. Uh, I wouldn't probably do too much for rotation for this. Uh, if anything, it's a little externally rotated because this is the medial condyle. So I would uh, maybe put a little sandbag under the toes to bring that out just a little bit. Um, that even might be too much of a correction. All right, let's look at this one here. Zoom it in a little bit. That's just about, it's almost the same image. In fact, it might be a duplicate. I'm going to keep going here. There we go. I had had some zoomed in for, for better detail here. Uh, now this one, to me, it's obvious that the, the inner condyle right here is smaller. This one would probably be the, the uh, larger of the two, so I'm going to call this the medial condyle. Um, this one is going to be the lateral. Uh, I've got two planes of motion here. I'm thinking of left to right, I need to get these two superimposed in a horizontal fashion. And top to bottom, I need to get these two superimposed. So this one's going to take two corrections to get it just true lateral, uh, ideally textbook perfect. So left to right, again, rotation. If this is medial, I need to bring it over here. I need to turn that leg uh, externally, uh, turn the foot externally, in order to swing that over to superimpose this uh, lateral condyle here. Now once I've done that rotation, I'm going to also apply a tube angle. Uh, probably another a five degree tube angle would be enough to take care of that. So, uh, you know, being able to look at this and determine which uh, steps are required to repeat uh, the image successfully, um, yeah, it's important. You want to be able to repeat these without doing it multiple times. Um, everybody repeats. I do myself. I did a couple times this week. Uh, probably more than a couple, but I'm, I'm just saying a couple just for a, a vague number. Um, but everybody repeats. We, we need to learn how to look at an image, take the time to sit and look and see what went wrong and know how to correct it before we go expose anybody again. A good technologist can do this well, um, like I said, because everyone repeats, but, but repeating uh, unnecessarily, um, you know, we want to avoid that as much as possible. So again, with this one, we're going to apply a five degree cephalic tube angle to get rid of this uh, lack of superimposition, and we're going to rotate the leg externally just a little bit um, in order to bring this over to superimpose the condyle, uh, the lateral condyle there. And let's look at one more here. <clears throat> I particularly chose this one because I wanted you to see the, the other end of the spectrum here. Um, I believe this is the larger of the two condyles here, which would make that one the medial condyle. Here's the lateral condyle closer to the, to the image receptor. This one is over-rotated. Sometimes patients can, you know, they lay their foot uh, sideways, you know, lateral on the table, and that, that ankle has some kind of twist give to it. Uh, I think you'd be familiar with that when you're, when you're doing your oblique ankle, you notice that the, there's some medial flexion there that can, uh, that can be present that, uh, you know, when positioning for a lateral knee will cause it to over-rotate. So for this one, the patient's doing that, you could either have them, you know, dorsiflex the foot to straighten that out, or you could just put a little sandbag or a sponge underneath uh, the foot in order to bring this medial condyle, uh, you know, back to superimpose the lateral here. Um, you're, you're internally rotating the leg. And again, you've got the medial condyle lower or uh, inferior to the lateral condyle here. So a tube angle, you know, five to seven degrees or so would probably take care of this one. Well, I hope that's helped. Uh, please feel free to comment, ask any questions that you like. Um, I, I think that, you know, just due diligence in, in looking at these a lot, as well as if you're a student, getting in the lab. Uh, take, take an excellent image, take a perfect one, and then rotate the knee internally, externally, annotate, you know, which is which, and just study them. 
Uh, so do the same with tube angles. Do, do one that's about five degrees where the condyles are superimposed perfectly and then give a little more tube angle and shoot one. Annotate it, you know, say annotate 10 degrees cephalic angle and then do one with a perpendicular beam or even a caudal angle um, and annotate those. And that way you can put them on a flash drive or email them to yourself. You can study them at home, and uh, I think this will make you a better tech in the long run, and you won't have to spend so much time on your ART registry exam uh, thinking about it, you know, looking like you're posing like a mannequin in the test room and the proctor doesn't know what you're doing. Uh, you know, I'm sure they've seen it before, but I always think it's kind of funny to watch students testing. Uh, everybody's got their their uh, thing that, that works for them. They close their eyes, they, they arrange their bodies in whatever position. Uh, but if you can get used to this, uh, you don't even have to do that stuff. You, you just do it really quick and uh, it becomes routine. And uh, hopefully you can share that knowledge with uh, future students that you might see at your clinical site. Well, that's all for now. Uh, please keep watching and I will have more to come.